Hey guys, it's Ann Yorks from The Flower Box, and I have a really fun Thanksgiving cookie tutorial for you today. I love Thanksgiving so much. I love all the food, the turkey, the pie, the mashed potatoes. It is so delicious. And so today's tutorial is inspired by all the delicious things we eat. So I made a turkey dinner out of cookies. I'm going to show you how to make a turkey platter, a pumpkin pie, a mashed potatoes and peas, turkey legs, and I'm also gonna show you a really cool carving board that has stencils. Gobble till you wobble and eat, drink, and be thankful. This one is a ton of fun, and if you remake these cookies, your family is totally gonna to get a kick out of this. We do have a cookie decorating kit that's paired up with this tutorial, and you can find the essential cutters and stencils in this kit on flowerbox.com. All right, this one is so fun, we gotta get started. Let's cookie it up. I'm going to start this tutorial off with my favorite cookie from this set, the turkey platter. Now this little turkey leg that I'm tracing, this is a template that you can find on the kit page. It's a free download on flowerbox.com. And you can see I just traced that leg onto the turkey using a brown food marker. And we do include one of those brown food markers in the turkey dinner kit. And tracing that leg onto the turkey really just gives me a lot of confidence to pipe through that area. Then I'll outline the platter and the main section of the turkey. And I have a tip number two on all of my piping bags. Once my outlines are complete, I'm ready to flood in. So I have a tipless bag with 10 second royal icing and I'm gonna flood that turkey base in completely. Before I put this cookie in front of the fan, I'll flood in the white section on the turkey leg as well. After the cookie has about an hour to dry, I'm ready to flood in the remaining areas. Now we see that beautiful texture, that leg just steps out and sits off from the background of the turkey because the base had a chance to dry. I'll flood in the blue platter, and after another quick dry, we're ready for some details. I have a tip number two on my light brown icing and also my sunset orange, and I'm gonna add several potatoes and carrots to the base of the platter. If you like these icing colors, check out the full color guide on the blog post about this set on flowerbox.com. To make these carrots, I'm using a strong hand squeeze to make it look wide at the end, and then I ease off my hand pressure as I pull that carrot out. Let those potatoes and carrots dry for at least an hour or two so that the surface set up enough that you can draw the eyes on the potato and some lines on the carrot. This step is optional, but it does add a really neat detail to the cookie design. Now this one's almost finished. We're just gonna add a little bed of lettuce or greens to pop some color in here and a little bit of extra texture. I have a tip number 65S, a mini leaf tip on my green icing bag, and I just wiggle that tip all around to get those little leaves piped on. And this cookie is ready for the dessert table. Speaking of dessert, let's take a look at this pumpkin pie. This is another really fun cookie to make. I'm gonna start by outlining the crust, just piping those wavy lines. Then I'll set off the whipped cream at the top. Now I'm using my orange and I'm adding the pumpkin pie area. And I'm almost done, I just wanna add the blue pie pan. We're gonna flood in two sections to start, the pie pan using that beautiful blue icing and the pumpkin pie. Both the orange and the blue have a little bit of ivory food gel added to them just to mute those colors just a little bit and tone down their brightness so that they fit with this fall cookie platter. After those areas have a chance to dry in front of the fan, I'm ready to flood in the crust and the whipped cream. I just love this color combination, the white with the orange, the blue, and the light brown, it just looks really awesome. 
Now let's add the details. This is always the fun part. I'm gonna start with some loops going across the crust. This will just add a really fun, whimsical texture detail to the crust area. Next, I'll add some daisies to my pie pan. Notice the petals are teardrops of icing. I like to pipe two at a time, up, down, left, right. And that just helps keep my daisies looking consistent from flower to flower. Now it's time to add the centers with a dot of yellow icing and a little bit more color. I'm gonna pop my orange tip in there. Almost done. Just need some swirls on that whipped cream and this cookie is ready to go. Next, let me show you how to make this really cool carving board or cutting board cookie. This one was fun to design, but it does have a few steps, so let me walk you through it. I wanted to make it easy to pipe my outlines, and so again, I'm using a template with that brown food marker, and I'm keeping my outline really close to that line because I want to pipe a second outline. This will be a groove that's in the cutting board. We're actually not going to flood in that area, and so I kept those lines super close and tight. I'm adding a circle on the handle and now I'm ready to outline the outside of the cutting board. Sometimes when I'm piping, I just don't get the right shape. And so you can see here, it just looks a little weird. I'm gonna use the flat end of my boo-boo stick and scrape that off and pretend like it never happened and I'll re-pipe that line and it just evens out that design a little bit more. It also helps that once you flood it in, your outlines really disappear because that flood bumps up and over that outline and that helps to even out your designs as well. Again, just a reminder, we're not flooding in that little detail. That's meant to be the groove on the cutting board and so I'm just gonna flood, flood in the center. If you need to clean up a section like I did, while the icing is still wet, just wiggle your scribe in there and even things out. Now we wanna dry our cutting board before we airbrush. And I'm going to mix white with harvest brown to create a light brown airbrush color. I always start with white and then add the brown second just to make sure that I don't make too much color. I'm giving it a good stir with my craft brush and now I'm ready to go. I'm using a stencil blocker or a banner mask to airbrush this cookie, but you could also use a piece of cardstock or a piece of paper to accomplish this as well. And I'm just gonna slide that blocker across the cookie, airbrushing against that line. And this just gives the illusion that several planks of board have been pressed together to create this cutting board. I just have to make one adjustment at the very edge of the cookie to get those final stripes on there and we are good to go. And that just looks so cool. I did practice this technique on a coaster first and so if you haven't done something like this before, sometimes practicing on a not a cookie or a coaster is super helpful. Now it's time to stencil on the message which is gobble till you wobble. And I'm using a thick, stiff black icing. I'm spreading it generously onto the stencil and then I'm gonna peel back that image. One really important tip when you're stenciling on a cookie using icing, because we're putting pressure on the surface of the cookie, you really need to let that base icing dry for four to six hours before you do that section. Also, icing color matters. When I've created my samples for this cookie, I actually started with the blue icing, but I didn't like it. It didn't look readable, it was hard to read. So let just take a look how easy it is to fix that icing. I just stenciled that black right over the blue. So if you ever make a stenciling mistake and you want to cover it up, you can line up the stencil and use a new color to create that image. 
After all that work, let me show you the easiest cookie from this set, the turkey leg. And I think this would be an awesome cookie to personalize because it has that big flat brown space. Um, these could be cute place card cookies at your dinner table. But it's easy as outlining those areas with tip number two, flooding in the brown and letting that dry and then flooding in the white. And that one's done. And it's always nice to plan a couple easy cookies in the middle of more labor intensive cookies. Same thing with this side dish, a little bowl of peas. Not a complicated cookie to do and it's a nice breath of fresh air after all the work that the turkey platter and the pumpkin pie were. Outline both of those sections using piping icing and tip number two, and then flood each section in, allowing for some drying time in between. Now, let's add the peas. I'm using flood icing to keep those peas nice and round. I add half the peas and let that icing dry, and then I'll go back in and add another round of peas. If any of your dots melt together like mine did, just add another pea on the seam and it'll look like just layers of peas in the bowl. I'm going to make this bowl match with the pie. And so I'm gonna add these cute little daisies to the bowl of peas as well. Again, I add two dots at a time, up, down, left, right, just to keep those similar in shape. Some orange dots just for a pop of color. And I changed my mind on this one. I think a line across will actually look better. So I'm going to pipe that as well. We're almost done, let's take a look at the mashed potatoes. Again, outline and flood alternating sections allowing a little bit of time to dry. Then add a square of yellow for the butter. I outline and pipe that area as well. Once the cookie has a chance to dry in front of the fan, I'm ready to add the details. I'm going to finish off the bowl, similar to how I did the peas and the pie, adding that cute daisy pattern. Almost done. We're just gonna create layers and layers of mashed potatoes using wavy lines. Yum, yum. Now, let me just warn you, these cookies are just as tasty as they look. You might want to make extras because your family is going to gobble them up on Turkey Day. I hope you enjoyed this really fun tutorial. Check out the blog post on flowerbox.com for a full icing color guide, tips on baking, and also, of course, the cookie decorating kit that goes with this set. That's all for today. Until next time, happy decorating.